talk about the VOD and the silver screen. Kevin and Tom and Joe know all there is to know from masterpieces to deep fried tacos. And if the movie sucks, you might hear them say, There's no telling where the guys will take you. Get ready for a spoiler. Won't say it twice, cause we're already. Broadcasting from the lush but not lavish studios located in the basement of the O'Keefe Institute for Advanced Film Snarkitude, this is Real Spoilers, episode 786, Ghostbusters 4, if you're a misogynist. Five? Ghostbusters oh, yeah, okay. 5, <laughs> if you're not. No, just... <laughs> that one's not in continuity. This is four. Yeah, no, I was going to say, in continuity honesty, for now. I would, I would yeah. consider this four because it's not in continuity. Yeah. I would not the be girl surprised. one is not in continuity. They have, because they, they have f- the old Ghostbusters playing different characters and that. Yeah, one, I would so, not yeah. be surprised if they find a way no. to do a Ghostbusters multiverse. No. And they bring in the other four. Well, that... depends on how this one does. They might have to. Yeah, that, that's true. That one, I mean, is yeah, right or wrong. Yep. Wrong. It's wrong. It's. That's so t- tainted and toxic. Sure, they would never bring it in. Yeah. Don't we say that it would no because these there movies are to trying to correct a major c- to come around on that as a property. Uh, did they announce? Did they announce that as like that version as well as a sequel, a legacy sequel, or was the legacy sequel in? Response. response. It was, response. It was a response. Okay, but they didn't response. announce them at the same time. If that one no. did well, they would be the Ghostbusters. That's yeah, fair. if that had worked, we'd be on our third one of those. Right That's now. true. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But it did not. It did not. Yeah. Because fans are dick bags. <laughs> not fans. Yeah. Not yeah. People. I mean, like, I mean, I don't like that movie, but it has nothing to do with the being Lady movie's Ghostbusters. Fine. I like the movie. I, I thought. Like the, I here's my thing. It who actually, are you? It, it, are, who, who, is oh, who is this? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> have we started already? <laughs> we have started. Yes. You haven't started yet. I haven't started yet. Sorry. No, no. no go, go ahead. What you're saying. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, well, it remembered that Ghostbusters is a comedy. Yeah. Yes. You know that's the Ding. thing where it got it right. Yes. Where these new ones, well, this one a little bit got it right. The one before, not so much. But. Yeah. So. Bingo. Well, let's go around the table and everyone can introduce themselves. This is Joe. This is Kevin. And this is Tom. And joining us today is Matt Reedy. Hey, Matt. How's it going? Hi. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for Matt, being here. Matt Reedy from the Dune 2 letter. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> He's like, counterpoint. <laughs> might or might not have slept through actually, uh, actually, my counterpoint wasn't so much a counterpoint. It was an in-between. It really you was. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you know what? That episode got a lot of views, so maybe we it should did. talk more about Dune 2. I don't think that's a bad <laughs> thing. You know what else got a lot of views it really quickly? Love's life, love lies bleeding. Yeah, oh, really? yeah, it did. Yeah, yeah. in only a few days, it's over five, six hundred views. Oh, wow. so. oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and El- Priscilla got a lot of views. So. Three point six Hate thousand. Views. Those so, are great. Uh, <laughs> we just want to start off by saying that Slimer is a pedophile. <laughs> oh, I was like, Elvis Presley's a pedophile. You're yeah. right. <laughs> oh, Maybe Slimer is Elvis's ghost. They never really say. Oh. Oh. It, ex- oh. it would explain. I, it would explain <laughs> the culinary decisions. Yeah, yeah. That's Slimer's true. Yeah, making, just so. slime and everybody that comes in contact with them. Yeah. 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 Oh, I was thinking <laughs> the big pile of fast food and. That's what. Yeah. No. Also yeah. true. Yeah, yeah. It, it works on both levels. <laughs> so uh, before we dig in, uh, shameless plugs, don't forget we're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeart, TuneIn, YouTube, wherever you find a podcast, you can find us. While you're there, be sure and follow us so you never miss an episode. Maybe leave us a review. It's super helpful, and it's greatly appreciated, and it's good for our wounded egos. Mm-hmm. You can also... Uh, Eguns. Yes. <laughs> hey. You can also find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash real spoilers. While you're there, like the page. Uh, join the group. The group is called the League of Show Sharers with artwork designed by Matt Reedy. That's Yay. right. Yeah. And uh, um, and it's called the League of Show Sharers because we're hoping you will share an episode. People who were kind enough to share an episode last week include Travis T. Witt, Tammy Lynn Powers, Betts, Tom Dowdy, Ralph Tribble, Chris Falls, Phil Timon, Julianne Jordan, uh, Richard Crotzer, Chris Magic Man, Gabriel Lugo, Taylor Ward, Heather Sachs, Corey Tatum, James Install. David Rojas, Colby Mack, Binge Movies, Geek to Me Radio, Mike, Mike, and Oscar, In Session Film, Ronnie Castle, Matt Niglia, and The Film Bee. So thank you very much. Also, don't forget you can watch all of these on the aforementioned uh, YouTube. And 
you can support the show if you are so inclined uh, over at Patreon at patreon.com slash real spoilers, uh, where 100% of the money goes to Matt. Uh, <laughs> Basler. Uh, Basler. We have yeah, to. Yeah, we, one, we, we, 100% of the profits. You're 100% <laughs> correct. <laughs> All profits go to Matt F. Basler. Yeah, but the MCU's done. Yeah, it's in, it's in the that, can. That's y- finished. Yeah, we recorded that last week, and we're getting ready for MCU Phase Two. So no, we did Phase exciting. Two. Phase Two is on the main show. <laughs> we we just didn't do Phase One. Someone's trying to turn this into a horror podcast because and... it is. <laughs> That's what it is. It's a horror movie podcast. But there's a lot of stuff on there. A lot of horror and non horror and interviews, and there's all sorts of stuff. So will, check that out. There is one thing that I think we should. Th- I did not mention on the Patreon, and well, I can. Hmm. I guess I can mention. There's going to be a if you're thinking about joining the Patreon, I recommend it only because. Since we've wrapped up the MCU, we're going to put a poll up of a bunch of different stuff we can do. The one thing I didn't bring up that I thought about after this is the Crow, like the Crow series. We haven't. Oh, my co- gosh. We haven't covered those. All I don't think I did. I did. A, I did an audio commentary with local DJ uh, Learn from uh, 105.7 The Point. We did a commentary over the main movie, but I don't think we've ever talked about those given the most recent, I don't know, 50-50 split over the, the new crow trailer i think that might be something that could be kind of fun to go yeah. back and revisit even the really bad like you guys don't even know edward furlong that's cr- that's crazy yeah. there's a there was a tv show there was oh. a syndicated tv show with oh, yeah. mark, mark dukakis as eric draven Can't so they bring him there you have to bleep it out when he says dukakis <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> it's questionable yeah right? the uh it's matt Bacaucus. <laughs> oh, I don't know if you can say that either. <laughs> uh, but it's the he's the guy. He's the guy. If you don't know, he's the from the American version of. Uh, he's from Double Dragon. That's also correct. He's from Double Dragon. Let's but get I real. think most people probably know him as the the uh, the host of the American, American Chef uh, or whatever Iron, Iron Chef. Chef. Iron Chef. Yeah. yeah. So you kids that are complaining about Bill Skarsgård looking like the crow, go back and watch City of Angels, The Crow Salvation, Wicked Prayer. Don't don't. Don't talk to me about we'll bad see. looking crow movies. I love it when people complain about like you're ruining the original. When, no, you're not. When there's like, first off, no, the original's still there. Second, there's like 45 different <laughs> ruined yeah, versions right. of the original. <laughs> yes, that's exactly like, right. Just forget they exist. Like it's everyone gotta... does with the Smokey and the Bandit made for TV movies. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> there's Correct. like eight of those things. Is and there they're... really that many? I think so. Smokey there's... is the Bandit. Sm- well, that's the third one, oh, that was or was going to be the third one. But there's like they did a whole without Burt Reynolds. Yeah, it was yeah. it was they were made for TV movies. They did this thing called the Action Pack. Oh yeah, yeah, and and it aired in syndication, and then they would it, and every week it would rotate between different established IPs, and so there's like there was like a series of made for TV movie sequels to Smokey and the Bandit, and then there was a series of I think they did. Dukes of Hazard with a whole new thing, and then they did um, Midnight Run with uh, Shooter McGavin. <laughs> oh, um, really? Yeah. As like, who? As uh, as, as De, Niro? De Niro character. That's yeah. wild. Did you hear there's a script for two? <laughs> like Sandler handed it to Shooter McGavin at a con or something recently. He said, "Hey, you'll like this." Handed. Oh, it to Happy Gilmore too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, to thanks. Net for Netflix. No. Uh-huh. I mean, I like the first. That's the thing is, I, you were just talking about it. I love that first movie. Uh-huh. I don't need a second one. Oh, I know. Yeah, no one yeah. needs it. Now Chubbs can't be in it. <sighs> That's true. Like, even as a ghost, remember? Cause I like, guess you could make him a... I mean, if they brought back Egon in the, in the first movie... I don't movie. think they're... <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they're going to bring him back. It's what Carl Weathers would have wanted. That's exactly yeah, he right. Yeah, he's back yeah. as a CG actually, ghost. Carl Weathers like, as long as you're paying my estate. <laughs> That's yeah. right. That's right. So... Yeah. But uh, but anyway, uh, there's all that. Uh, let's dig in. Well, before we do, I, oh, Matt, okay. you know, I think it's... <laughs> Obviously, this time of March is the real spoilers slash review STL birthday week. Oh, yeah. Uh, so Kevin's is tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Blake's was a couple days ago. Yeah. Steve's, Steve's was yesterday. Was, yeah. Dan's was a couple days ago. Mine yeah. was on Tuesday. And I'm in September. And you're, you're the only one that's not a March. <laughs> but Matt Reedy, I don't know if you can see this on camera, was kind enough to give me a, a Wolfman's Got Nards <laughs> uh, sticker from uh, Monster Squad, which is great. I love it so much. Thank yeah, you so Jeff much, Jeff Carlson Matt. is the artist. I sat up next to him at a uh, convention last year. I, I love as it. As soon as I saw that, I was like, whoop. I, I will say one of the fun things about this community is I have been given, uh, I guess that's not true. I paid uh, Brad Brad for that poster. <laughs> Brad, but they're looking out for it. Yes, yeah. they're looking at which I I love it so much. So if you weren't, if you don't know this story, Brad 
we were we were literally recording an episode and brad hyan a uh, f- friend of the show was at a convention and he a, a guy had a rolled theater used monster squad poster and he was like somebody this guy's do you want this and i was like how much is he asking for and he was like 25 bucks i was like <laughs> buy it like buy it now and i'll pay you for it and i so i have that framed in my New you know, house for, for an actual theater poster, twenty five bucks is pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For real. That's what I thought. Yeah. But like you know, sometimes you get the like it's theater used, but you can feel the paper stock is like that's not yeah. good. right. But I touch like touching that one, I was like that's a one sheet's thick. Yes, yeah, like and slick. Yes, and they're almost see they're thick and slick. They're see through. Right. <laughs> like well, they they have to well, have because like, they put behind the light. That's exactly light it. Yeah. The old so, like, ones were double sided. Like, double sided, but the other side was in reverse. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 So like my Superman Returns poster. Yeah, that's just the S, like just for the record, because it's a cool looking poster. Is just like that, and mm-hmm. my Halloween Returns poster is like that too. Yeah, uh, um, but yeah, thank you so much, Matt. This is so good. It's gonna. Uh, I love. I, I love that movie. Awesome. Okay, let's uh, let's dig into Ghostbusters: Frozen Empire. I I had a lot of fun at this movie. I thought it was light. Uh, I just I'm don't. Glad someone did. Yeah, I just. It's gonna, okay. It's, it's okay. okay. Yeah, it's okay. like that's where I landed. I'm like. It's fine. Like I wasn't mad that I spent money and bought popcorn. That's you know what I mean? where it was, I'm at. It was yes. fine, but this is a really good live action adaptation of the cartoon. Yes. thank you. That was yeah. exact. My exact thought. Yeah. I was like, like, this is an episode of the real Ghostbusters, but overstuffed. But there's right. there's yeah. this weird thing happening with Ghostbusters where I feel like each one of these is an overcorrection to something that happened before. Right. So. I think there's two good Ghostbusters movies. I think Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters Afterlife are the two good movies. I think the second one's bad. I think this one's okay. It's I weird. Think... The second one to me, the second one's like the first half of it is good. Yeah. And then it just loses the thread. It goes so wackadoo. It's boring. You don't it's... see a ghost for 30 minutes in the second Here's one. Here's the thing, so though. It's so boring. I don't and care. The, the ending is a retread of yes. the first yeah. one. So is this one. Is, well, yeah. Inst- yeah. But, but instead of fighting a giant... A p- marshmallow man. They fight a giant statue. Yeah, of it's Liberty. the same. Yeah, but the no, big, they didn't. No, they, they were the statue. They were the statue. Right. Oh, yeah. right. But but still, but big, visually, it's big the same. giant creature. Right. Yes. And also, it's like coming off off the first one, and then all of a sudden, it's like everyone hates the Ghostbusters and doesn't believe they're real. And okay, so that's. I mean, I'm not defending it, yeah. but like that is a lazy sequel trope that you see in almost every sequel from that. Right? They don't continue a story. Yeah. It's like they they because they didn't plan to make a bunch mm-hmm. of them. Like this is, this is the upside to movies always planning for sequels these days. Is they, there's they, a story? They try to lay the groundwork, but original people they never thought they'd make more Ghostbusters. Sure. It was going to be one and done, and they move right. on to the next thing. And so all your problems, all your conflict is resolved. Yeah. And so then the to create conflict, they always end up busting up the team and destroying the magic. Of the first one, like this one, because you spend the bulk of the movie with the people you loved hanging out together, being mad at each other, and not hanging yeah, out. I don't together. like it. It's so, and it, and they, you see it all the time. You're in, absolutely in sequels right. From that well, era. it's think of all the Rocky movies. They always have to have a contrivance to make him the underdog, right? You know, he, he comes <laughs> yeah. out on top. Of, no, something's got to knock him back down to zero. Yeah, for and sure. Then every yeah. time, which but, honestly, in the Rocky movies, though, that's not terrible. You know, there's like, always someone stronger that comes and challenges or younger or yeah. younger. Yeah. 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 Which, but, but or the, Russianer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Russian. But so and I think the other problem with Ghostbusters 2 was the advent of CGI. Yeah. And so in the original Ghostbusters, he is Vigo there. It's all uh, it's all practical for the most. I mean, Slimer's not. But sure. like, no, he's, for, a, he's a puppet. Is he a puppet? Uh-huh. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's um, a puppet in the new movie too. For some of the scenes. okay, oh, that's cool. Yeah. But like, it's basically all practical. When she's levitating on that bed, it, yeah. they're mm-hmm. doing they're doing magic, right? Yeah. Right. That's a magic trick yep. that they're filming, and and because of that, Bill Murray would be there and he would riff. And but with Ghostbusters two, they start doing CGI, and then they're not together. Yeah, and it loses that comedy in the mo- that in the moment, which in my estimation the franchise has never gotten back well I, I it's i don't think we've talked about this before is that era of writing is over right like they're not you don't have comedy writers writing comedies anymore you yeah. have writers who are trying to throw in funny stuff so you know ivan reitman and i even i would consider judd apatow guys that could write Funny stuff. Harold Ramis. Harold Ramis is a great example. And Judd Apatow would let 
funny comedian, funny comedic actors be funny. Do their thing. And then sometimes for a little bit too long. Yeah, sure. But yeah. but um but but and then edit it together yeah. and and yeah. get you the the best of it and and that's not what they're doing here. And no. it's what's really weird is I get the vibe yeah that they did do it. Oh. And then they didn't use any of it. Hmm. Interesting. Like I, I th- there are moments that feel like someone's riffing a little bit. I, I like Paul Rudd. Yeah. I think the Paul Rudd busted makes me feel good. <laughs> like that was great. I think that was just Paul that's, Rudd being Paul Rudd. That's yep. probably the best line in the movie. I, yeah. Honestly. I, yeah. And I, I don't think that was in the well, script. I think this is the biggest pro. Well, here, there's two main complaints I have. The one thing is. The old Ghostbusters, which I this is such a nostalgia fest, but the old Ghostbusters wrapped it up perfectly in Afterlife. Yeah. Yep. Stop trying to ham fist in nostalgia with the I old don't, Ghostbusters. I don't even mind Ray. I like the idea oh, wait, of Ray. Ray's the best part of the movie, but yeah. uh, but I'm just saying the whole, Agreed. let's get them back suited up and busted right. ghosts. We did that. We and saw it, it. We had a touching moment. Egon yep. was there as a ghost. Like They finalized that. Have Ray be doing his spiritual stuff, whatever, and, and guiding them and guiding McKenna Grace. That's fine. But stop being like, oh, we have to suit them up like i get it you love them and they're not going to be around forever i get why they want to do it but it it just slows the movie down to a screeching halt and it be- doesn't have the impact that it did in it does in not no they're they're undermining yeah. it because well, they got together for afterlife and they got i it. even think if you do the kit like if you put ray in ray's role is fi- i think that works perfectly mm-hmm. because that's who ray was right then and Dan Aykroyd I haven't seen him be this good in a long time no like I thought he did some good acting in this but movie. I think yeah. having Ernie Hudson as the, the philanthropist man yeah I'm fine with have that, them doing Nick, that. Ha- having Nick Fury of Ghost yes <laughs> right having Bill Murray in that one little snippet I think is also fine right right but having them all come back at the end I, it's just yeah they yeah. should and all then be they graduated do they're not <laughs> Ghostbusters anymore you have Ray do the shop thing Ernie be the real estate guy Bill Murray doing whatever he does and he pops in but to keep having to bring them back to do the well, thing so William this Atherton? is my, my biggest argument or complaint with this movie is yeah. there's too many Ghostbusters oh, yeah. there's too yeah. many way, characters way too many go- I mean you have the new team oh, you have yeah. the old team but then you have now this third team of Winston's people, yeah, which are, I, I don't and even they've know, got why? people. They've got the kids from the last yeah, one. Yeah, they, 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 they had some excuse to move those kids from. Why are they in New York, Oklahoma? Oklahoma? Yeah. yeah. Why are those two kids in New York? Yeah. Like really, they were their kids. They got really an internship. Yeah, he's at space camp. But but why couldn't they have just left them there and they don't have to be in this well, movie? Well, because and, podcast and, was a very popular character. Was and he? I, was and he? Yeah, I, I think I've, I thought he was great, yeah. but, but I don't need him in every movie. And what about the other new guy? I can't even remember his name. I have no idea who that The guy, guy with the was. accent? Yeah. The guy that looks like cartoon Egon? Yes, <laughs> yes, yeah. thank you. That's a, that was my thought. I was like, they yeah. got cartoon Egon in here. They shortened his hair a little bit. <laughs> right. Yeah. I didn't even put that together until you just sure said that. I'm not sure what he brought to this. This, I'm, this is the problem with this movie. Paul Rudd, Gary Gruberson, Carrie Coon, Callie Spangler, Finn Wolf, Hard Trevor Spangler, McKenna Grace, Phoebe Spangler, Kamel Nunjani, and Nadim Razami, Pat Oswalt, Dr. Hubert Wartsky, Celeste O'Connor, Lucky, Logan Kim, Podcast, Emily Allen Lynn, not Jenna Ortega, uh, James, <laughs> a. Cast- James A. Caster, British Egon, not Egon guy, Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, Ernie Hudson, Annie Potts, William Atherton, and then, I mean, but those are like the main characters, but they just try to show you all yeah. of them so much. This movie's sub two hours. You have that many characters. It's too much and nothing, no one gets First the time. First off, it should be sub two hours. Agreed. Which is fine, but, yeah. but, 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 yeah. but you yeah, shove this many characters, divide that by each one and try to give them. You know, back to the, f- the funny stuff is if you watch the trailer, mm-hmm. yeah, that scene in the, in the mayor's office with William Atherton is totally different in the first one in the trailer in the first ghostbusters no or no, in this, this one this one he's talking about this oh one. yeah is it really it's it, totally different because they're doing this whole thing where they think like they're pretending like it's court and then and then finn wolfhard is like he's he's like objection sustained thank you and it's like and it's actually it's it's a, it's an amusing little back yeah. and forth yeah and none of it's in the movie this no. one is so which, lame which leads just... which goes back yeah. to why i think they were like they let Paul Rudd be Paul Rudd, and then they didn't use any of. Them. Isn't that wild? Yeah. Like, I mean, that guy—that guy is a tested. Paul Rudd is legit 
funny. Yes. Like, and and always. He would, and I think he's a great addition to this movie, and I hope one day they use him. <laughs> yeah. like, he should have been in way more scenes in this movie. It, 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 this the parents disappear. This is definitely... For, actually, a lot of characters disappear. They, yeah. Just, <laughs> they, was, were they filming Stranger Things they at must the same have, time? Oh, they because must have been. Finn yeah. Wolfhard just disappeared yeah. with no Finn, And like half of his scenes are him by himself. Yes. Yeah. Well, yes. It's him and well, Slimer. Yeah. We'll talk about this. This movie is like... You know, Phoebe, played by McKenna Grace, who yeah. is good. I like her stuff with Dan Aykroyd. They should have been the main ones that you saw. But but they're like, hey, you're too young. You can't be a Ghostbuster. But Phil and Wolf hard, hard can be. But let's not show him <laughs> for half the movie. It's yeah. like, why didn't they do that to the character? Finn, you can't for some reason be a Ghostbuster. Oh, he's not in the movie anymore. But it is, <laughs> like, it is definitely Phoebe's movie. Like, this yeah. is, she's the center character. And they did it again. They did it again where it's like, just pull the fucking trigger, will you? Like, they are definitely the ghost who I thought was Chloe Grace Moritz for a long time. I thought she looked just like Jenna Ortega, but I'm like, that doesn't sound like but Jenna she's, Ortega. You know, she is. She's the, she's in Dr. She, Sleep. She's the oh. one, like, she. she's the one that we see Rebecca Ferguson recruit. Uh, oh. The gal from, like, the movie theater who was okay. like, she's always like, she was killing pedophiles oh okay that's that's who that she is. was in a movie with jenna ortega which i thought was a funny oh really and it's a babysitter or something you would have probably oh, known that's the one with samara weaving yes samara weaving jenna ortega and the, is she the the ghost in this movie jenna ortega's in the babysitter it said i when i look a- emily allen lind plays melody of the ghost that has this romantic kind of they're like absolutely they're trying to say phoebe like is just gay. Go they're do not it. but like, i think this movie has so much backlash from the bad fans, which I'm not saying means they should. I hear but you. With the female yeah. Ghostbuster and but the then toxic don't do fans, it. then don't do it. Let right, them be right, friends, right. or let that let either it be, do it or don't. And you wonder if maybe they did and they cut it. They yeah. did. They uh, there's That's that the that thing. scene when she's a spirit. Let's and just they, get in the movie. Let's, yes, sorry. <laughs> we are not that far removed from the first Ghostbusters. We've got this new team of Ghostbusters. Just to touch on that real quick, if they're not going to pull the trigger on the McKenna Grace thing, pull the trigger on Carrie Coon and Paul Rudd. Like they have these interactions where it's definitely alluded that they're a couple, but they don't like, there's no loving embraces. There's no, like they just went through some like maybe you want to totally a couple. You want to smooch a little I mean, bit. He wouldn't be trying to position himself as the, the stepdad. Dad, they yeah. weren't a couple. Which, which but, was fine, but it just seemed like, I don't know if they, they don't, they weren't clicking seem like a couple at all. Like, yeah. I will, at I, all. I will grant you that. So they're busting ghosts. Like that's what they're doing now. The, the, the Spanglers are the, the new Ghostbusters team. Yes. And which is fine. So the movie should have been about the Spanglers, yes. the Ghostbusters being the Ghostbusters and not half the movie about the old Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters <laughs> yeah. trying to be in the new Ernie Hudson team being Ghostbusters. It's like this team was great. The dynamic from afterlife and they could have had a lot of fun with them, the family going around and doing this thing. Yeah. And, and, and putting together a new team. Yeah. That's exactly Why did they it. Do it. They set it up so that they could be like, yeah, but you know, these Ghostbusters over here, <laughs> yeah. our, our team is are chasing down the, the Jersey turnpike sewer ghost or something. And McKenna Grace has, I, I envision like this is who Egon was when he was younger, right? Just the kind of headstrong. I can kind of, I'm smarter than everybody in the room. The Hell's Kitchen sewer dragon. There we go. Thank you. So they're chasing this ghost and she, you know, kicks out of the, uh, the suicide door. And I do like, we talk about the comedy and I do like this interaction between everybody in the car where it's like, it's hot in here. The air conditioning is not working and now the window's not working and McKenna Grace kicks the door open and they're all freaking out that she's riding in the suicide This is scene. dumb. This is dumb. What is the point of having her hair there with a proton pack, with a car that does cool stuff that you can go out the side if she's not planning on doing it? They're like, don't, you can't do that. That's dangerous. It's like, you're sitting, she's sitting in the gunner seat <laughs> oh, yeah. with the proton pack. If they pack. didn't want her to do that, they How much do you catch sit, the yeah. ghost? That's right. the chair. Yeah. That's the part that gets out and catches See, the I, ghost. I, well, they have a lot of other tools to catch the ghost. They've got the drone. They've got the thing that drops out from the bottom. I took it as just traffic was too tight. That's and what I took she it couldn't, as. She couldn't open the door. Right. She, well, they, they do that when she, eventually when they yeah, catch they, the ghost and yeah. she gets, you know. But she they don't want back. her to open the door. Right. Well, yeah, yeah because traffic. traffic is too tight. I, I no. say, it's not, that was it's my not about having it's because it, it wasn't about 
you can't do it because you're young. Okay. It was traffic. Don't, don't do that. You're going to get taken out by a car. Traffic is too gotcha. tight. Okay. We're in Manhattan, and that was the least I amount of traffic were... <laughs> I've ever seen in Manhattan. Yeah. I thought they were babying her, and I'm like, no, well, no, she's no, a I Ghostbuster didn't... with a proton pack. Like, let her use the no, door. I think, okay. the, I, think I agree with Tom. I think they were like, the traffic okay. is awful. Don't the, do this. I'm like, this is not the appropriate situation gotcha. to use okay. that particular <laughs> Which mechanism. Is where, okay, so they drive around in New York all the time. Right. Uh, when else are you going to do that? I don't know. Okay. They rebuilt that car in Oklahoma. Where you could do that, and the, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. That's right. a good point. Oh, the regular it didn't do that before. No, they. No, did Ghostbusters they, always have a gun or no, something? No, oh, they, they made that up for the last. That movie. was an afterlife oh, thing. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. They what? did that so they could sell new toys. Yes. <laughs> that's, what? Oh, you know, maybe I'm thinking of the turtles. I was thinking that there was always no. a door that kicked open, but uh-uh. I guess I'm thinking of the turtle mobile. No, because that had the like the, the old Ecto one. I mean, it just had like the it. The only the only cool thing that it had was that where you would put the casket, they would pull that out, and that's where the proton. Okay, okay, fair enough. So they, of course, they destroy part of. The, they catch the monster, but they destroy parts of the. You know, there's they the proton packs are taking out parts of the building. If they're ca- see, this is the thing is like this movie. Like you know, we're talking about like in during Love Lies Bleeding. If you if you're not liking a movie, you start asking all sorts mm-hmm. of questions. So I'm finally asking after four Ghostbusters movies, <laughs> how come the ghosts are monsters? Why aren't they all people? That's a good question. <laughs> That's a good question. And again, um, harkens back to the cartoon where they were they weren't people ghosts for the most part. They yeah. were kooky creature ghosts that they can make toys for. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Well, because the spirits are like demon. I mean, there's a lot of demons that are yeah, but even possessing the, people too. So it's not really I, like. Well, I think of that scene in the second Ghostbusters when they're like, uh, the Titanic just showed up, and it's all of like you know ghostly people. Like kind of like uh, the the Disney ride, mm-hmm. Haunted Mansion, Haunted Mansion, like walking off of the, yeah. and they would look kind of like gnarly and sure. waterlogged or whatever, but and Cheech is there for no reason. Oh, he's there for a reason. Like they they paid him. Like, well, but for, <laughs> he was there to be like, is that the Titanic? That's yeah. a, so. It's like, okay. um, oh, Ron Jeremy's in the first one. Where? He's a, he's an extra. He's in the, oh he's in the uh, <laughs> in the crowd scene towards the end as at, as they're saving the day. Like I think you can maybe oh. only see him on the widescreen version. Okay, but, like he's standing behind one of the barricades. But That's Ron hilarious. Jeremy is in the first ghost. But, but this is Cheech, a very famous comedian at the time, in a speaking role. Ron for Jeremy's pretty famous. Ron Jeremy is pretty famous to some people. <laughs> Just saying. I think a cameo is different than I questioned. They got Cheech to come and say one line yeah. in the movie was kind of weird. But what's yeah? So they. They go back to the mayor's office, and of course, it's it's not going to be Lenny. Lenny, I'm sure, is long dead at this point. But it's William Atherton. Well, I also don't think he would be mayor for 40 consecutive years. Maybe. Yeah. If he does a good <laughs> job. I don't know. <laughs> That's a, we've had mayors in this city that were mayors for way too long. Yeah. It shouldn't have been. <laughs> but it's William Atherton as, I don't remember his Nick character's name. Walter it's, Peck. Walter Peck. Yeah. Uh, which, again, is one of the- Dickless. Dick, yeah, which is was, a, I thought was a great line in this one, where you they're at the end so, of the movie, and- Everybody's like, yeah, Ghostbusters. And you hear somebody in the background go, yeah, cheer for him, dickless. Oh, I, didn't, I missed that part. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought I heard that, but the crowd knows. But it also, like, why would somebody in the crowd know that? Well, I think it was a private conversation <laughs> held in the mayor's office 42 <laughs> years ago. Well, and, and Maybe that, it passed down as legend. Yeah, like that, it's just well, total so fan think, service. That's exactly. But I also think it's like some, you know, you could say it's somebody in the crowd just calling him dickless. Mm. But that's the problem I had with this movie yeah. is there is. I don't mind fan service when it's done right. Yeah. You know, like Deadpool and Wolverine is going to be fan service central. But that's what that movie is. That's right? my point. The character is yes. zany and that's meta. That's very that tongue Okay, uh, Spider Man. Oh sure, but you know what? Norway Home. Yeah, right. That's the one that. Uh, like that fan service was off the charts great, and it's written into the story. But it's right. the but yeah, but, but it's it the plot. It's, it's, yes. the point of, yeah. it's the point. This of the is movie. this is like when you when they're walking through the new Ghostbusters headquarters, and the one girl is in the background using the gun from Ghostbusters Two. I'm just like, why? Why would they be using the the goop from Ghostbusters Two? They still 2? use the same phone from Ghostbusters. Yeah. Yes. Like, <laughs> do, do the, do, would I that, had a laugh too when I saw the. Would I that almost even thought, still I thought they were going to make work? a joke about that? Is it like? Yeah. Do they still have traditional analog landlines in New York? Uh, is oh, it everything still VoIP? Landlines. They're still landlines. But has but everything it's... flipped to VoIP? Would it? Would it yeah. work? Oh, that's. A, I don't know. I don't know. I know where I work. They had to pull out all the phones because we switched from landlines to VoIP. So I still have what would physically per- would perceptually look like a landline, right? But the old phones wouldn't work, and I had to get new phones. So huh. I'm like, I, I the the rotary phone. 
I mean, my grandma has a landline. I'm sure that they still have landlines there. I, well, for a business, that just seems you know, I wonder. Right. I do wonder, but though, it's old since it's a firehouse. Good point. Yeah, yeah. Like you know? I wonder but if they, right to... it's kind of like a, in case this doesn't work, we've got this yeah. backup. Yeah, you know, maybe. But I, that has that was my my biggest problem with this movie. But is it's the Easter egg the movie we're the again. Easter, it's like yeah. it's like well, when we talk about Mario, where it's like it's yeah. just cramming Easter egg after Easter egg. Fan service when done organically is fine. You love to see it when it's not hitting you over the head. But when a whole movie is made, the of, Harold Ramis ghost in the last one works was great. I, yes. yeah. total fan service. But like you got. But this. it's yes. part of the story. The worst and that's one. The, difference. the worst one in this one for me was the library ghost. I thought the same. Oh yeah, I, it might as well just turn to the camera and wink like. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not mm-hmm. only the library ghost, but then the guy who runs the library. Yeah. Yes. You know, yeah. like all oh, that. Hey, whole remember s- me? Yeah, right. Oh, so yeah. I should be retired that by was now. Horrible. Okay, first of all, I don't remember that guy, and I couldn't tell you who that was, and I don't remember him in the second one. He's, but, not, he's in the first one. Okay, but I knew that because he stopped and they winked at the camera. Yeah. Yeah. It might I'm as like, well have been a neon sign over and said, yeah, remember so it's me like, from first movie. Yeah, that kind of thing is like, oh, come on. Yeah. Um. So Make him a part of the plot where something funny happens in the library, and he's like, quiet. You know what I mean? Like, don't walk up and be like, hey, you guys. Or even, or even have him say, oh, no, not again. <laughs> right. And then. But like walk, part you know. of the action. But don't not when they're walking in. He's like, hey. Yeah. Remember but the me? fact that they did the library ghost like scene for scene from yeah. the first movie. Yeah. It's like, come on, man. Well, and this I th- this is the thing I think that hurts this movie is it's written by I've by Jason Reitman and Gail Kennan. Right. And directed by Gail Kennan. Who wrote the Gail first Kennan. movie. Yeah. Right. Who, who wrote right he wrote it with him yeah. i i think that you know writing but he's not as strong of a director as jason reitman no and does jason reitman i i also understand from jason reitman's point of view is like i don't want to he doesn't want to be tied up with all these he did afterlife he set it up wonderfully yes you know yes great memory of for his dad and and like he set it up but i just don't think gil has as good you know i mean i like the guy i've met him he's nice he, he's directed monster house is a good kids movie mm-hmm. City of Ember, he remade Poltergeist in 2015, which, which is not a good which movie. Which got a very bad review. Yeah. And so I think a lot of people are like, why did they pick him to direct this? I mean, and I think it's the. He directed an 80s ghost movie. That, yeah. or he wrote the But he the wrote original, the successful you know? yeah. reboot. And I, mean, I get it, you know, and he earned his chance, but he's just not as good as Jason Reitman, unfortunately. And yeah, also the script's not very good. Yeah. Like and well they wrote it, which is weird. The, the two of them wrote both of them. Look, man. Which I can't really explain. It, yeah. <laughs> there are so, there are people who are writers who work in when they're writing, mm-hmm. right? Like, so when he wrote this in what, 84? Who, the Aykroyd? F- no, the Ramis? first one. Aykroyd and Ramis wrote the first one, mm-hmm. right? Is that right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Ryman so, didn't write it. Oh, okay. No, okay. He, okay. Just he directed it. it. Okay. Yes. Right, right, right. But so, okay. So Ac- we'll take Aykroyd, for example, yeah. right? He's He has the comedy stylings of somebody from the late 70s, early 80s. Now, it is. I think it's insanely hard to take that same style and transfer it to 2024 mm-hmm. because comedy is different, and I don't know that that version of comedy would work in sure. 2024, right? So, and I think this guy's kind of in the same boat. Everybody's woke. That's. <laughs> I gotta tell you though, you're not totally wrong. Yeah. Do you like, hear now is... people online are complaining that Sydney Sweeney was forced to do a woke? Nun movie, you know the one she produced and got made because she wanted to do it. <laughs> Apparently, Hollywood forced her into because she was being adopted by the anti woke crowd, and they had to put her in her place. That's so, so, now. so they made this movie in th- in the three weeks after that happened. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know what I like? I just read an interview with her where she said th- they were talking about Madam. We talked about this about Madam Web mm-hmm. and how she was like, "I have my foot in the door at Sony." Yep. Yeah. So and I, I was like, that's fucking I, brilliant. I told Tom that she's going to be the next Margot Robbie, yeah. right? I mean, obviously both two beautiful, talented people, but not just good looks. Margot Robbie is a producer. She she's produced very Barbie. I don't she's, think Sydney Sweeney, from what I've seen thus far, has the acting chops of does Margot not. Robbie. No, but but she's got the star but power. she's got the star power and, and the business And the acumen. business right. sense, right? And right. so she's like, you know what? Madam Web was a job. I did my job, and I got connections to make that other movie and that made tons of money. And nobody's going to blame her for Madam Web. Oh. They can't because she's in it for all of like 10 minutes. Right. Absolutely. Like this, nobody was like, this is the new Sydney Sweeney movie. Right. No. So it doesn't matter if it, it was kind of weird that they didn't market it that way. I think she has nothing. I think to do if with it, it had came out four weeks later, they would have. <laughs> oh, 
Because her star kind of took off, yeah. Right? Like I think they had kind of already locked in their marketing plan. Well, she yeah. had that rom com was really high. Yeah, yeah but it, time. but it, like it was a slow burn. Oh, well, like yeah. it, it was. It, it was good. It I watched it. Yeah, it was solid. Yeah. But it didn't come out and make a hundred million dollars opening weekend. Yeah, it, it's been doing it. It just slowly kept making over the past ten million months. dollars a yeah. week. Pulled up yeah. my big fat Greek wedding. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I like. I actually bought it new for twenty three dollars. I didn't usually did really? do that. I for, liked it a lot. It was very fun. Yeah, it was good. Um. They are that you can't put those two people in the in a movie anymore. Like they are both too good looking. I people. think they just filmed one together. Did they really? I think oh, they filmed one probably. like simultaneously. It's like, it's like Blake Lively and Ryan Reynolds. Like that's, oh yeah, that's no, too I, mean, I think that's the plan is that they're oh. not going to make sequels, but they're going to make spiritual sequels. Yeah. They're going to do the. And they're uh, going to keep pairing them up. Road like, movies like well, Bingo. who was it? Was like it Hepburn and Tracy? But it was. I mean, I'm going to get struck down for comparing those two to Hepburn and Tracy. But, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's well, the same about, model. How about Runaway Bride. <laughs> yeah. What? What's uh? Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan and Sandler and Drew. Barrymore, yeah, yeah, that kind of oh, thing, yeah. 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 But uh, yeah, they just, I'm pretty sure they worked on something like right after or simultaneously or whatever, so they're gonna have was it McConaughey one. and Kate Hudson? Did they do yeah, a bunch they of stuff did a together, couple, right? Yeah, yeah, um, more than one, I think they did, I think so. I don't know, I don't know. Um, so yeah, so they, William Atherton's like, I'm finally, finally, I can take down the Ghostbusters. It's like, bro. That is a grudge, my friend. <laughs> 40 year old. 40 grudge. year old, yeah. The and guy who knew that being a middle manager at the EPA was a, <laughs> was a, was a rocket ship to becoming mayor <laughs> well, of New York. It has been 40 years. And you know, we all know people like Walter Peck who just s- fail upwards, suck <laughs> until they get to where they need to get, you know? Here's the thing he's not wrong. He's yeah. also not wrong. Well, all of his complaints wrong. about a 15 year old girl shooting a proton pack through and his carrying complaints the, was in the first one are wrong. <laughs> yeah, it was 100 true. Correct. Yeah, right, right, right. Well, in the first one, he he looked at them as they're con artists. He thought yeah. they were making it up. But oh. he's also case, he like, this stuff isn't safe. If what you're doing is true, we don't know that any of this is safe. Yeah, right. It's like also it's, funny that he. Right, because in the first one, he goes into the firehouse and, and he shuts, shuts it all down, and then that sets everything off. It's yeah. like, but you saw it, ha- and now it's happening again. Yeah, which was he in the second movie? I can't even remember. I'm sure he must. I have don't. Had I don't think he was. I, in the I, second I honestly one. don't remember because it's just it's some other guy that's trying to shut him down. You think they really? Oh, maybe. But they were already shut down at the beginning of the second one. Yeah, it was fallout from the Marshmallow Man disaster. They got well, sued for no, but they the but city. but when they when when stuff happens again, they're like back, and then there's another guy that's trying to. Man, is that even, right? Mm-hmm. I don't even remember. I haven't watched it. He that is long. he is Vigo. That's what I remember yeah. from that movie. Um, yeah, the Ghostbusters come back and start doing commercials and stuff, and there's a guy in the wings working for the mayor's office. Oh, that's okay. like trying. I, he's an actor, you'd know, a character actor. I just don't know what. His that name is one is, of the things that I do that I thought was we talk about fan service that I thought was brilliant in this movie is the fact that they take all of the marketing from ghostbusters and they play it in this as like the ghostbusters parlayed their their yeah. fame or whatever into the toys and the cereals but they yeah. kind of do okay. that too don't they no they, no i thought it was the they do with the music video and the commercials but they don't with toys and oh, i do like okay. that at this point yeah. it's toys and cereal the real stuff I, yeah yeah but i like mo- that a lot. this movie made clear that the second movie's canon because they showed the the, the statue of liberty yeah thing. they should but yeah it wasn't in the second movie the idea that they were all washed up because you know, everybody blamed him for ruining the city covered with marshmallow goo. Or I, I, that's like the that. thing about and, the second movie. I think is stupid because they shouldn't have. It's they. Right. Why couldn't they have just been and Ghostbusters? They were, they, and they were reduced doing to doing thing. children's parties and stuff mm-hmm. like that. If I remember, yes. Right. Yeah. So that then a, that makes me wonder where all the marketing. At what point in time? We'll you know, in this movie, post, they show the post two. cereal and the. I would, I would think. I would guess post two. The stuff we didn't see. That makes sense. Okay, because they they walked the Statue of Liberty using a Nintendo controller. They were heroes again. Sure. Okay. So yeah, so the Atherton's like you're out, and then I none of the everybody kind of is is an agreement. He basically like, says like Phoebe's too young. She's 15. To we're be not a even ghost. we're not even paying her. He's like, oh, so oh, now we've got child yeah. labor laws that worry. That, that doesn't make any sense either because it's not labor. She's not if they're not paying. Not her. paying her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But she's working. That's but slave labor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I thought he was going to be like that. Slave human trafficking. Is it, is it slave labor when you tell your kids to take the trash out? I was going to say it's a chore. Yeah, yeah. busting busting ghosts is a chore. But, but I, I think it's slave point. labor if you own a restaurant and make them wait tables. Yeah. Well, good point. Maybe <laughs> if it's a money making operation. Here's your allowance. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I did like that part though, where Paul Rudd's like, "I got this," and he goes and makes it worse, and she's like, "I think you need to come back here." <laughs> but also, I do also like 
So that I, and I overall, I like I said, I did enjoy this movie. I had a good time watching it. I want an old timey Ghostbusters prequel because when they went to 1902 Firehouse or whatever, like the movie opens with the what will be like the impetus of yeah. this movie is that there's this crazy demon creature trapped in this orb that these like the fire the fire wielding people fire walkers the, or whatever yeah could control and they trapped them in this orb and so you see it in like the old timey they're out of the firehouse there's like the old fire it would wagon be fun and to all see that. like an old west wild wild west ghostbusters but, but not was, wild wild west with yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they were just firefighters but i was like are these going to be the like the, <laughs> the first ghostbusters? I, I thought they were getting, right yeah, i thought exactly it was going to be like an old timey ghostbusters yeah. like before for the, and I thought that would be fun to watch. That would be but, fun to watch. But yeah. like, I like the fact that Paul Rudd, you know, in the first one, he's their teacher, right? Mm-hmm. And we've, we're past that. And it's definitely, we've said before that he and Carrie Coon are our couple. Yeah. And I, to New York I do like that he's trying to figure out, like, I don't, and he, he vocalizes it. He's not just being like, I don't know what I'm doing and doesn't come talk to anybody. But he talks to Carrie Coon. He's like, I don't know what the line is here. Yeah. And I like that idea where in, instead of having this fake conflict, again, we talked about it in Love Lies Bleeding, where rather than have this conflict that nobody talks about and have that be a plot point, they do that here, too, where he's like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Like, do I go too hard? Do I want to be their best friend? And she gives him, she's like, do it. And this is kind of a funny scene where he was like, I will be nice to you, but mean to your kid. Yeah. She's, that was like, like, she's like, yes, that's exactly yeah, what I want. Every scene with Paul Rudd is funny. He's yeah. a funny guy. Put him in more of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I totally agree. And I liked in those moments where she kind of snaps back, not snaps, but like quips back at him. And I was like, yes, like this is what the Ghostbusters was. He's like, uh, yeah. He's like, I'm going to be nice I'm, to you and a dick to your kids. I she's like, and, and, she, I like and she, even she goes, yeah, that's exactly that's what a, yeah, I want. Perf- yeah. Perfect. <laughs> um, McKenna Grace gets sidelined. She now what I thought was going to happen here. She goes to Central Park to play chess. Mm-hmm. I thought it was going to be, be Egon. Egon. I thought it was too. Yeah, and, and I, I was glad they didn't. I don't know. He's got, no, he did. Uh, no, he, he, he passed he already, on. He, he moved on. He oh, evaporated. That's right. Remember, he his business you're right. was closed. You're right. You're if right. He brought him back. Like again, they used that trick. It pulled at your heartstrings. Yeah. It was perfect. Yeah. They can't keep doing it. Uh, I just these knee jerk response. This movie says yeah. that they can keep they, doing they, it, they, they, <laughs> but they, they keep didn't. doing lots of things they can't keep doing. <laughs> right. Yeah, so. but they didn't with that one. And right. I'm gl- so I'm saying I'm glad they didn't because that's unfinished. But so she goes and then she meets this ghost ghost girl who who I I assume burned her family alive. Like that's the wasn't that what they were hitting at? That's like, what I was, thought she too. Was, she was playing with matches and, and, and set her family also, on fire. I don't think she. I don't. I didn't take she didn't it do as it on purpose. purpose. No. Yes. She yes. She was okay. messing around, and then now it's her guilt of that happening is why she can't. Yes. Can't move. Can't did they move make? On. Did they say when this had happened? No. Mm-mm. Because I thought they were trying to insinuate that this happened a long time ago, but. As it goes, she looked like somebody who died like yesterday. Well, she, she, said, agreed, I, she looked I, like a modern. I got the vibe that yeah. it was supposed to be a long time ago. She's not dressed that way, but she did not dress or, or talk that way. herself in yeah. that right. manner. Yeah. Hmm. Um. So she basically, you know, they have this. They're playing chess together, and uh, there's definitely some tension. Like McKenna Grace, who is still kind of Egon, always kind of did have that nerdy, like weird standoffish kind of character and she adopts that she's got the same hair as Egan. it's all the same i think she's really good in both movies i wish she's great would have just given her she's more actually focus. i'd forget she's in this movie i don't know if anybody ever talks about it it's with it's the movie that chris evans met jenny slate slate on hmm. where mckenna grace plays his niece and she's like a genius and chris evans is trying to keep her away from people figuring out that she's a genius but they're anyway but she's insane at superpowers so no like oh, that's captain america <laughs> no 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 another one no, different one push push, push? Is what, no is it, is it? Oh. but this is it's it's uh, it's a cute little rom-com kind of movie rom-com drum i okay. guess that's kind sure. of the way i would describe it um and she's in that but she's a little girl in that and she's great in that like she's very very good uh it's interesting to see her in other interviews because she is not like. She doesn't look like Egon. She doesn't look yeah, like Egon yeah. at all. She's got like long blonde mm-hmm. hair, and um, but she's a you know. She's a good actor. Okay. She is a good actor. By the way, the first scene where they take off without her, you know, they they all get in the car, yeah, like it, you know, and you have to stay behind. Something really weird, and my wife noticed it too. When she's standing watching the, you know, upset because she watches her. There's somebody walking around in the background. Oh, and, really? And, yeah, in the firehouse, and I was like, is there, 
Who was that? What was That's that? Funny. Um, another ghost. It, it must have been an extra. It must Janine? have been like it must have been. Oh, okay. I guess it could have been. Janine. No, no, it would, wouldn't have made any sense. Why She's she another one it where it's like, like it was just some guy walking around back there. I think it was a, I think it was a crew <laughs> member, and they left him in the funny. <laughs> but take out Janine. Take out. Uh, Bill Murray, you know, you just I don't, don't even, need the these Bill characters. Murray thing. Is I think that's I don't the initial time we see Bill Murray when he's when uh Camille Nunjami's got the, like the the, the calendar the on calendar his on his head. I don't mind that because like it gives Bill Murray a paycheck and he gets to be he gets to sit down, do a little quippy stuff, and then he's out. Right, right, right. But that's some, but they don't really move. Well, they've the not story. made any advancement in that technology. No, <laughs> in forty years. No, you know why? Because you have to have nostalgia for the one right. from the. It first. is interesting yeah, that they so don't dumb. bring back Rick Moranis. He doesn't want to do it. He doesn't want to do it he at all. No, well, he was retired for years. His yeah, wife died. He retired yeah. to raise his kids, and then. And then now he says he's not retired, but he's very selective. Yeah, and but I guess so, if he can be, he's not taking paychecks. Isn't he doing? Like isn't he doing well, a Honey? He did, I, he did. He agreed to make a Honey I Shrunk the Kids sequel, TV, but it's been, TV show. It's been stuck in production. Oh, um, but they were gonna do a some sort of Honey. It was just gonna be called Shrunk. Mm. No, is that really it? Yeah, oh. which sounds like the Broadway musical version of <laughs> Honey I Shrunk the Kids. <laughs> By the way, I would argue that he's the funniest part of the first movie. It is not a. Fun. It is I, not I, a far jump to yeah. leap. I was supposed to be John Candy. Is that right? Is that? Yeah. I did not. Wow, know. that yeah. would have been very different. And he's funny in the second movie. Like he's good. Oh yeah, I th- yeah. I think Rick Moranis is underrated. Yeah. Like I think that guy because he's been gone for so long, people forget. Yeah. Like Strange yeah. Brew. I grew up with watching Strange Brew. Oh, Strange Brew. oh so yeah. god, no Strange point so in staring now, eh? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, he's so funny. I I honestly I know I, his line. I put Strange Brew like up there with Mr. Mom. Yeah. Like and I. Because those two movies, oh man, I could watch those movies all the time. So good. They're so Game good. <laughs> um, Mr. Mom, Mr. Mom's great too. Mr. Mom is yeah. Megan. So. You're making me crazy. That's what you're making me. <laughs> so flash forward to raise a cult. Can we just books. talk about Mr. Mom? Oh yeah, yeah. raise a cult. Kumail, Kumail Nanjiani comes in and he's selling his grandma's. He is old- great. Yeah. He's the best part of this movie. He's the I think. only guy who who's knows telling jokes. What movie he's yes, in? Yes, yep. yes, he's thank you. Funny, and a lot and of complaints he, are like he do, he seems like he's in a different movie. Yes, yeah, he's in the good he's movie. In the good he's in the movie. It's supposed to be. He yes. is so funny. You're, he's so charismatic. He's so genuinely funny. You're, the Ghostbusters that I would like to see is Paul Rudd, Camille Nanjiani, McKenna Grace. And you could throw any of those guys, you know, uh, Zach, Zach, Zach Efron. I mean, like, <laughs> like any of those guys who have the comedic chops. Yeah. Uh, I, I know just, there was a period of time when they were going to reboot it and it was going to be like, it was the Seth it, Rogen, Michael Sarah, oh, Bill and, Hader. Yeah. And I'm like, that, that would have been Ghostbusters. great. Yeah. 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 It, yeah. it absolutely would have been great. And I think they would have told jokes. Well, here's well, the, yeah, they would have riffed. I don't want to bring this up again. The female led one. They did exactly that. They yeah. brought in female comedians. Mm-hmm. They told jokes. But it was yeah, actually, a bad but story. Although, I, although, oddly enough, the funniest character was uh, Chris Hemsworth, Chris Hemsworth. That's <laughs> which, was, which is kind of weird. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. It shouldn't be. You've got the But that's movie. more an attested to his talent. Yeah. 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 But I, I always I said it on our episode. I'm like, funniest part of that movie was Chris Hemsworth. His yep. lines yeah. killed every, every time. And they were improv. He was quick. He, yeah. He's good. yeah, he's very but funny. Yeah, because Paul Feig directs, and he, he knows how to work mm-hmm. with. But he's coming off. What's the bridesmaids? Uh, no, well, yes, but he had just done. Had he done the heat? The heat. Was that before I, think, that? I think heat was. I think right heat before. is twenty fifteen. That sounds right. Is like that right, right before? And it. that movie's again. Heat's, heat's very. Funny. Bridesmaids and heat are one. so good. Heat, yeah. it, you, I cannot recommend it enough. It's really? very funny. Yes. Oh, yeah. um, so so he comes in to sell his grandma's trinkets, and little does he know that his grandma was like a protector of these. The she's, fire a, she's a fire walkers, God. and she has been tasked from generations down of handing down this orb that we had seen in the beginning. All yeah. the old timey guys that were in the collector society, the adventure society, they had got their hands on this orb that had been protecting this demon from hundreds of years back. And so when she dies, he goes to hawk it for fifty <laughs> bucks. To Ray. The first one, he's like thirty, and Ray's like, "Oh, this got something interesting." He's like fifty. <laughs> like, he's like, like, look at the look at the he's like sixty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very funny. Uh, but so but he sells it, it to him, and Ray uses PK meter, and the thing like explodes. This yeah. thing is so off the charts with spiritual energy. Yes. I, know, I know you guys are too young to think about this, but what did that orb look like to you? It looked like a typewriter ball for Thank electric you. typewriter. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yeah. exactly. The whole time I kept waiting for it to spin and yeah. type something out. <laughs> That's and, fun. And whatever language yeah. that was on the thing. Yes, yeah, thank you. Um, so then the, you know they they put it they put that away. McKenna Grace has this uh, relationship with this ghost that is continuing on, and the we find out that the, that the ghost is working for the 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 ghost inside the the ball, 
and they have this and that's machine. That's what's in a Wonder Ball. That's in the Wonder Ball. That's right. What's that's in right. The Wonder Ball. Oh, it's, it's like a Pokemon. It is like a Pokemon. Yeah. That's yeah. a bad Pokemon. It's so we should Pokemon. mention too that the uh, the spirit containment unit or whatever at the firehouse is full. This they're is like you've the, never emptied this or but never. But this is a plot from the cartoon, right? What the, I, maybe. Thing the, the thing being full. Well, it was maybe, getting maybe. full in the first one, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah is you, there? You see it like bull struggling yeah. to keep up. Is there a scene in any? I can't remember. I feel like it was must have been the cartoon where they look in, like they had like a view master where they could look. I think into, they could see him in the cartoon. Yeah, th- is it the right. cartoon? I think right? you're right. Okay, which is what I was like. Just do it here. Like if you're gonna make the cartoon, here's what I think would be a good plot point for the Ghostbusters sequels is that going into the containment unit. Oh, that would be good. Yeah, but also like the Phantom Zone. Like yeah, the idea of the containment unit. Is pretty cruel. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Right? Just letting Be- them live because in... they're stuck in this place. It's not even purgatory if you believe in such a thing. Like these are ghosts that couldn't cross over, and you're locking them in a box, metaphysically speaking. Yeah, like right. it's pretty mean. That's See, that interesting... could have been a whole plot point. You yes. could have had a whole group of people saying, right. like, like pro ghost. Yeah. Saying, yeah. hey, you're, you're, you know, let the right. ghosts out. Yeah. That would yeah. be a cool and, way to flip it on. I gotta yeah. tell you, in yeah. 2024. There would absolutely, absolutely. be pro ghosts. Get yeah. them out. Let them yeah. let them live their lives. You locked w- up my loved ones. Yeah, thank right. you. Yeah, my grandma's in there. Yeah. yeah, they played something at the beginning of this movie that was hilarious. It's um, who was the guy in Silicon Valley? Oh, Thomas, Thomas M- Middleditch. Yeah. He is like, you know, he's at his house and he sees his the the ghost of his wife for the first time. And she's like, I'm sorry. I love you so much. Can I at least kiss you? And she's like, yeah. And then four Ghostbusters bust in and bust her like in front of him. And he was like, she wasn't bad. And, he, and the guy's like, I realized as soon as I pulled the, pulled the trigger that this was a bad idea. And then the guy's like daughter shows up. Uh, and she's like, Daddy, I miss you. Please, like, don't. He's like, I'll never let anything hurt you again. And then another <laughs> Ghostbuster busts in and busts her. That's pretty and good. he was like, Yeah, that wasn't a good idea. I should not have done that. Really sorry about that. Um, so, so we find out that that uh, Winston Zeddemore, Ernie Hudson's character, is aware of this, and he has been making a new containment center with his team of people uh, that has been, you know, trying to transfer all the ones from the old firehouse to there, and they say, you know, if we do this nonstop, it's going to take years or whatever. Like, it's a huge ordeal, but they're already working on it. Yeah. And so they have the, the orb. Ray has given it to them, and they go to this new facility that they have and kind of show us they show us a bunch of new ghosts you know i gotta tell you that one the shadow ghost kind of creepy yeah it was, was. that was a creepy yeah. ghost Which one's the, shadow? the one that was like the the demon looking thing that was like in the darkness the oh shark, yeah, that yeah, was like, yeah yeah kind of then, like a dementor yeah you got yeah. one that can possess any inanimate object you have a little one that's like cute but then he like barfs all this <laughs> stuff on you you know just funny new which is fun like that's yeah. the part i like is what creative ghosts can they come up with that you see um but you know so they're kind of setting up all these characters these ghosts we're going to see later but they're building up this new facility um to contain the ghosts yes and this orb is there and we, again we get the retread of the the tiny stay puff marshmallow men mm-hmm. and the minions the see minions. they were funny in the first one because they were like I little gremlins uh, i liked them in the first oh. one because it was a, a little touch of nostalgia a little fan service but then they were gone but and it was but, also a tweak on fan service right? yeah like instead yeah, yeah, of being yeah. right. giant they made them small yeah. even though it's but they a were little <laughs> they were little mischievous little funny goobers you know right and in this one there's like oh yeah remember those guys they're here here they are yeah they, they, they came from oklahoma all the way to here <laughs> yeah. but there was there was no reason to have them except for like remember they were funny and they sold funko pops but yeah. but in this one they're mm. not doing the mischievous mischievous well they are except, but they're like the the pre the mid credit scene Yes. Okay, but yeah. throughout the film, well, you know what I mean? They're all kind of locked up in this, that's, aren't that, they? Yes, yeah. they're all kind of locked up. Um, but I know, but like... Somebody who, feeds them after midnight. Yeah. <laughs> but who cares then? Like, just It, it, it was only funny because they were like running around doing goofy stuff. Right, you know? right, right, right. So I don't know. I didn't think they played well. Like the one that this. melts themselves? Yeah. <laughs> just like, you know, they're setting themselves on fire <laughs> and they're jumping around. Like, that was a great scene. Now that this orb is in with all these other ghosts, like the other ghosts are like... Want nothing to do with it. Yeah, like it. it this this ghost is so bad it scares the other. Well, and ghosts. here's the point. So only a human can unlock the orb. Just let's just jump right to yes. it. Yes. So yeah. the not Jenna Ortega ghost character is trying to use McKenna Grace so that she can be possessed. So they have this. Moment. Well, no, they they take. Yes, you're right. They have this machine. <laughs> no, but you're right. But uh, well, they have this. They <laughs> have this. Trying to get right. to it. They have a machine where they can pull yeah. a spirit out of this 
possessed object. Yeah. So McKenna Grace hops into this machine because she wants to make out with this ghost. Yeah. That's what the whole point of going into this machine is. So yeah. she has two minutes in heaven. Yeah, that's, exa- gonna... that's right. <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, like what's the point of committing temporary suicide? <laughs> yeah. Um if you're not going to kiss the ghost, you could stand there and just look at the ghost. It was just really weird to be on the same plane, but to, for no reason. Well, I think yeah, <laughs> I could even accept the fact that the the the, the Bernie ghost, not Bernie, like Bernie Sanders, the ghost no, of Bernie Sanders. Not the, that that would have been great. Um, not that I want Bernie Sanders <laughs> dead. Just the fact that there could be a Bernie Sanders ghost that would be very funny. Um, well, eventually, I, yeah, that's true. I could see where that this ghost was setting up McKenna Grace the entire time, right? She's playing into her emotions. She knows that she's got her. And then as soon as McKenna Grace becomes a ghost, the, the other, the, the bad ghost inhabits her body. Right. So they don't get to kiss because that was never the plan to begin with Mm -hmm. from bad ghost point of view. From queer baiting her. That's exactly it. Like that's kind of the way I took it. But there is a moment where this ghost says, do I have to do this to her? Like, I think the ghost it, did like her. I think so, I think right? so too. Yeah. But, but, but I think there he, wasn't, he just wanted to meet, reunite with her family yeah. so she was willing to, to, yeah, like, to do whatever. Do, do the bad thing. And and McKenna Grace was into this ghost and she didn't have the opportunity to kiss her because she was already possessed. Sure. So she she so the bad guy uses this possession to speak the words that can unlock the orb. And I guess we find this out because Pat Oswalt. Yeah, he's in this movie at the library. He's basically Ray 2.0. Yeah. Yep. Right. So, yeah. he, exactly so he says it. that only, oh, this is whatever language and whatever, you know, so that's it's like his... a, it, I, if he said ancient Sumerian, I was like, come on, man. But he's like, <laughs> it's even older than Sumerian. Yeah. I was like, okay, but fine. but that's so he says, oh, there's this language, whatever. So she speaks the words, the orb unlocks, and then we get big demon horn which i think is a really cool looking it's a creature. good design i like, I like this I movement because they tried to do the like stop motion type movement from the original yeah. stuff yeah well, from what i understand that also was a puppet awesome yeah, oh. it, looks, yeah. it looked really cool it, it was good cool yep. and basically this thing is death like it just freezes everything that it touches <laughs> although uh, ray says so, didn't give a word for it it goes it's the power to kill with fear yes but it doesn't kill with fear it just creates icicles <laughs> you know <laughs> in fact most of the people that seems to be injuring didn't even see it All that's true you know, that's a good point. Well, it's really s- scary because you're frozen, and so like you're preserved and you're awake, but like your senses are so slow. Maybe yeah, that's, and then you're really scared. But then they do a thing for a Terminator thing where the ghost, the the freezy ghost, goes into a place that's called like the Fire Master Vape Shop. And he's like, "Are you the <laughs> Fire that, Master?" And he's like, "Yeah." Look at that the was a funny joke <laughs> that, that the smoke shop was called Fire Master. Are you the Fire Master? <laughs> well, that's I mean, it's, but it is that's kind a of a re, it's a retread of the joke in the first one. Yeah. Like, the are the you the master. key yeah, master? Yeah, yeah, I am yeah. the gatekeeper. Whatever. I thought that was good though. Um. He's like, yeah, man, I'm the fireman. <laughs> but they can't, like, so n- the proton packs don't work against this thing. So they realize that uh, Camille knew Johnny's grandmother had an entire back room that was just laced okay. in brass. And those jokes were very funny about the whole thing where he's like, these whi- <laughs> that's what these are whip- these whips and chains. Oh, it's a like sex dungeon. dungeon. Yeah. Please, please stop talking about <laughs> these, If this was a way. sex dungeon, why would these be there? And that's exactly what would be in a sex <laughs> yeah, hand- dungeon. They, all- they had handcuffs and chains in here. <laughs> yeah. Why else would they be here? That was a very funny interaction. <laughs> uh, so they realized that McKenna Grace, again, being the smartest one in the room, she the proton packs run off this certain thing but they have to co- she has to take like parts of the reactor it's and brass copper, yeah it needs to be copper, or brass. copper or brass right and so she takes and copper pieces. is really expensive right now so it's true well, no, they, 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 they actually make copper has been stolen yeah, yeah. although yeah. i found yeah. that funny because i'm like they so apparently it was deserted yes I guess. yeah so, but then the containment unit was still down there working all this time the whole time yes whole nobody time. nobody wanted to mess with were it. going in there and yeah. it. They, they left the containment unit alone yeah again. right but ernie hudson bought it and cleaned it up right i think yeah. he kept it like res- running but just enough you see they were still struggling there at the beginning yeah, he that's was just true. like You're not, Here's, i'm not gonna pay we'll for buy everything this property but you right teach them a lesson i kind of like that though yeah oh i like that um the entire time, Finn Wolfhard's like, I'm 18, I'm 18, I'm an adult. And uh, they, they're they having like a leak. And Carrie Coon's like, yeah, you're 18, so fix it. And she's like, the kid's like, cool, I have to put my hands in black mold. That's great. I love that idea. <laughs> um, so McKenna Grace takes apart her proton pack, and she dips like pieces of it into... Uh, melted down brass. She cut off the, cut the fire <laughs> pole. She cut the fire, the fire pole. pole, which magically reappeared, by the way. <laughs> the, uh, yeah. In fact, and all of a sudden there was two fire poles. I yeah. did notice that there were two. I yeah, thought that was and interesting. I, was like, I thought she cut that thing down, <laughs> yeah. and now there's two. Maybe they're magic. I, yeah, I don't know. They're ghost fire poles. Yeah. Um, so oh, that's why she liked to slide down it. Hey. Uh, 
Maybe. She's 15. Don't make those jokes. Wow. <laughs> um, the ghost was 16, so I guess that's still within. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. I guess that's right? all right. No, statute of ghost limitations? Statute of ghost uh, limitations. Um, so the ghost ends up, they, he wants to take out Camille and Johnny, and they go to the firehouse, and they go, all the Ghostbusters are there. All of the Ghostbusters are there. And McKenna Grace shows up. She's the last standing Ghostbuster. And she hits this ghost with the new proton pack that's got the brass laced thing, and it stops it. On sale now at Walmart. That's yeah. exactly. <laughs> yes. Ab- oh, we're going to build And this whole a- time, he's trying to learn the fire bending. Yeah. He I thought it thing. didn't really stop him. And then Kumail had to use his fire. No, it stopped no, it him. It stopped him. And then he had to use the. But she was running out of juice. Mm-hmm. And then. Yeah. Kumail, it, yeah. It shorted it out. Uh, but I do like that he's just like can't figure out how to make the fire move yeah. and he just like makes it move a little bit and he's like i did and it and he's like watch this and he's <laughs> doing it with the candle <laughs> it's like, yeah. i like the paul Rudd's even like okay like yeah. that's what we've got <laughs> all right um so yeah community johnny shows up wearing the whole like it was very fire funny walker he, yeah gar- picked out the whole outfit and garb put it on uh and they, they these two end up fighting together and fight off the ghost they they realize that they don't have a trap strong enough but then has the have they always said that the containment unit is a giant trap? I mean, why wouldn't it be? What? They they said that actually wouldn't. They showed the blueprint for it. They said it was a giant trap. They oh, said, okay. They said okay. Egon designed it as a giant trap. Oh, okay. okay. I mean, I figured it the the traps work on the same premise, and it's just a portable tra- that's fair unit to move them from point to, to contain point them, and then put them in a larger mm-hmm. storage. That's device. fair. We should also say that uh, the 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 containment unit gets cracked open because the deal is this this freezy ghost is going to basically corrupt all of these other ghosts and make them work for it so we get in i mean shot for shot retread of the first movie when william atherton turns off the containment unit and yeah the, the big beam in the sky shoots mm, out and all the beam. all yeah with, i love it yeah thought we had seen our last sky we beam, that, but yeah. apparently not uh where all the ghosts are like flying you know it's a, it's the exact same thing i think yeah. they may have even used the same musical cue uh, which is a great cue in the first movie. Yeah, um, they didn't use the rap from the second one. They didn't, thank God. <laughs> well, because the rap references Vigo. Found out about Vigo, the master. Oh, Vigo, it is. Isn't trying it? to battle my boys. <laughs> That's not legal. It can't do that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Bobby Brown sang that in concert. No, <laughs> really? really. Yeah. Wow. He had a solo show and he he sang that one. <laughs> That's cr- man. That's I think hilarious. that did really well, didn't it? Like top the pr- charts. Yeah. For a while? I don't know. if It was number one, but it it, 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 it did, definitely it got played on the radio. Ray Parker, Parker Jr. Yeah, I was like, no, Ray Parker Jr. Yes, but, but what is? Oh, I want a new. I want a new drug. Yeah. I want a new drug. I they that's. At the draft house, they talked about how he they got sued, mm-hmm. like constantly, for that song. Uh, it was Huey Lewis. Huey and Lewis sued because it's a, Simon it, and Garfunkel. Oh, really? I didn't no, know that. I didn't one know was about a joke. That. Okay, they were talking oh. about, how but yeah, but but uh, Ray Parker Jr. got sued by Huey Lewis because it's a retread. It does of, sound. I, I want, want a new, new drug. drug. Yeah. And then uh, and so he had to pay a bunch of money, and then eventually uh, Huey Lewis had to pay it all back. Yep, because uh, there was a. It was an NDA, part, right? There was a non-disclosure agreement as part of the settlement that they wouldn't discuss it, and he, like, thirty years later, discussed it on oh, the behind no the way. music, no. and and that negated the terms, and he had to pay it all. Oh back. my gosh, that's yep. crazy! Wah, wah. I didn't hear that one. That's, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, that, that, but you know what? He enjoyed the money for thirty years. Yeah, so yeah he's all right. He got his use out of it. That's that's that is one concert that I regret not seeing. Like Huey Lewis in the news was one of my was is one of my favorite bands of all time. Like that's when the I was, power of love. that's so great. Like all that stuff, but I never saw him. I saw him at concert. Mississippi Nights. Yeah, right uh, in between sports and four. That's where you want to see him. And uh, it was right before four came out, and they were like an arena act at that point. Mm. Oh yeah, and they played Mississippi Nights under a fake name. Oh, oh wow! And like it kind of leaked out that like there's a band playing Mississippi Nights, and the name was Sports Section. Uh huh. And so we were like, we we bought tickets even though they d- wouldn't confirm it, and then we went and like sure enough, sure it was enough, huge. that's it was awesome. Huge. Oh, Just man. wanted to play some clubs, and now he doesn't play anymore because he's, he's, he's going he lost to death, his hearing, right? He's lost his hearing. Yeah, which sucks. But his, he was supposed to play. Uh, we've got a little amphitheater in Alton. And he was like the big act for that uh, summer, and then like, like a month before. Yeah, it like, was like six weeks before. Yeah, yeah, six weeks before they're like, nope, nope. Dang, uh, Melody yeah. turns on Garaka, realizing she did not. Yeah, she. To honor so she. Garaka Khan. Garaka Khan. I thought about you immediately. When I heard <laughs> How that did name. she restrain him? I don't she remember. Gave, this part. She gave McKenna Grace the match. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. She, or she, that, for the she fire. Did, I thought she lit oh, maybe she herself. lights it. And she then somehow magically. Camille and John. I thought that was a nice payoff to the match thing. It, it was. Where the yeah. ghost matches work like well, matches. Well, you but think it was a real, it was a it was real, real match. matches that somehow she was able to hold on the to. The book of matches okay. was the thing that she was possessing. But there was something magical about it because you see her take it out yeah. and try to just light it and it didn't work. She closed the book cover and, and there was another match. Okay. Interesting. That's true. Yeah, because I remember in the beginning when she shows at the chess bench right and it's a ghost matchbook like it's in her ghost form i th- maybe but, the i don't know by the way there was one scene with her that we kind of skipped over real quick that i thought was kind of interesting where she was in a diner was that it mm-hmm. and yeah they get called and then so now you've got uh phoebe's like like oh i'm here to i'm here to bust, to bust you and oh gosh this is the oh. ghost I, this and is even the ghost pod- i've got a crush on and then she kind of paused and then she, Fired at her anyway. Yeah, and a so podcast destroys, is like shooter, shooter, shooter. Yeah, yeah like right. destroys the diner. <laughs> well, to me, to me, that's the part where maybe you know, Flame Ghost, whatever her name is, was like, oh, okay. Well, if you're gonna do this, then I might as well sell you out to. Mm, interesting. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that would have made an in- for that would have been interesting motivation. Yeah. Like, oh, well, if you're gonna bust ghosts, then. I right. think Human Torch was her name. Yeah. It was Melody. Was her name Melody? Okay. Uh, uh, but I. But even going back past that. Where McKenna Grace is like, look, if I wanted to, for, I'm really good at this. Like, yeah, if, if I, I wanted, wanted to, bust, I yeah. would have. And she was like, okay, fine. Um, so yeah, they the the city thaws. Everybody, everybody wins. The William Atherton shows back up. No, Garaka does not win. That's true. He gets fouled. <laughs> but well, well, clear. Okay. So yeah, we get sort of what, he hey he freed all those ghosts. That's they, what I'm saying out. though. <laughs> that, and it's just like the first one where yeah. the the beam is set off in the sky. All these ghosts get loose. Um, but the juice is loose. The juice is loose. Mm-hmm. I do not want to see that movie. I do. I can't wait. I cannot. I'm so excited. I can wait as long as I can possible. Well, did they show that trailer before? They did it for me. I didn't. We didn't get. We it. didn't get trailers because it did a thing where the <laughs> movie didn't start on time. God. And then it was like we waited like 20 minutes. I and this and... is why people don't go to the theaters. Yes. I love going to the theater when it works well and the people behave. Alamo is a great example of this. Yeah. But the big chains, AMC, are so crappy about people on their phones all the time. The movie doesn't start. The projection's bad. It's like, and the prices are just as expensive yeah. as yep. I went. I went out and said, hey, you know, it's been 15 or yeah. 10, 15 minutes. And they're like, okay, we'll get it going. And then it started playing at the point, it sh- you know, like already 15 oh. minutes into the movie. Oh. You know, it was a, it was a scene with Finn Wolfhard, you know, with in oh, the, the and I was That's like, I went back over, so I had yeah. to go back out. I was like, hey, you got to start that over from the beginning. And it goes, oh shoot, and he yeah. goes, and runs off. And it's a mess. It it's, was it was a big mess. These, well, hey, yeah. you know what? I guarantee you, there's some projectionist that's at the theater right now, you know, gritting his teeth every time this happens because they don't have projectionists. Yeah, yeah it's just, right. It's, it's just it's a, a button. It's a button. Yep, yeah. it's all programmed on timers and yeah, stuff. So I went to Alamo to see this because especially after the last one, I'm like, I'm not doing this anymore. Totally I'm not going to AMC it. anymore. Is, I just can't do it. It is heads and shoulders. It, it is. It's the best the best experience. Best in town, for yeah. sure. It's because they I just don't care. want to drive that far. Yeah. Which makes sense. Mm. Yeah. It's, but, which is why, like, sometimes I wouldn't do it, but then I regret it every time where I'm yeah. like, you know what? I'm driving that far and spending a little more on popcorn because I just have a terrible experience Not, at AMC. But, but do you spend a little because it's endless? Oh, I spend a lot more. Yeah. But you well, get a, I have you five dollar his... endless popcorn, or I have ten dollars plus six dollar tip popcorn. That's fair. It's okay. Fifteen versus okay. five. It's a lot more, and it's a little further away. But, but it's worth it. if you get like three bowls of popcorn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I get three bowls for five dollars at the other place. But these are bigger. <laughs> it's endless. <What? laughs> I'm just saying, I, and, and I, I got goes to, to eleven. Do, wait, yeah, that's right. Does AMC have churro popcorn? They don't. So there yeah. we go. No, no. My but point they, is, they've got <laughs> flavored popcorn. Oh, do they? They've got. You can get caramel. You can get. No, they, but they've got gourmet. But Alamo put Alamo puts little pieces of churros chopped up in the popcorn. Not mm. not Mister Mister Salty's <laughs> sprinkle bunch. You know what I mean? They gotcha. have like really good. We're gonna trademark Mister Sol- Mister Salty's way, sprinkle I'm, bunch. I'm not a popcorn guy. I'm a, more yeah. of a candy guy at the movies. Went out to Alamo once and I, I just asked for M and M's. I, I assume a pack of M and M's. Nope. No, it comes out looks like a Chinese yep. leftover container. Yep. With M, a like, full thing is, of M and M's. I was like, this is the weirdest. It is very. <laughs> when they when you do ask for like scooping with their hands and you know <laughs> putting it in here. On it. I bet that those are prepackaged. Okay. I'm right. willing to bet that they because it is they you ask for like they have gummy bears mm-hmm. or Reese's pieces which yeah. I, you know, uh, or M and M's and they come in like this little like. Chinese takeout container, but it's quieter. It is because a bag. That's oh, it. Does it make you, the wrinkling yeah. sound? Yeah. That's exactly you're what it is. In it. See, Alamo thinks about all this, and I'm serious. Like they put so much thought and care into the movie going experience. Yeah. And Kumail Nanjiani said he will come out and shush you Which if you do great... not silence your phone yeah. or if you talk. So you at your AMC, you get those bulls. 
uh, Nicole Kidman. Oh, look at my ads. blanket I made. Oh. In, uh, in, at, uh, yeah, that's a Marcus. At, yeah, at the at, at the draft house, you get Camille and Johnny telling you to turn yeah. off your goddamn phones, or I'm going to shush you. I'm going to embarrass <laughs> you so hard that you will be you want to leave the theater. So Ghostbusters are back. Yeah, the the ghosts are out, much like the first the ones. So, uh, no, um, and that's they become the Spanglers. Like, well, first, okay, the, the mayor is da- trying to show up and say. Yes. Okay. We're we're getting and of we're going to arrest you all, and everybody's like Ghostbusters. Yeah. And he's, he's like, like oh, hey, yeah. dickless. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I will say the Phoebe calling him dad thing was so bad. Forced and I, so bad, bad, I bad, didn't bad, even bad. mind hate it. it. Hate it. Hate that it. was not earned Especially whatsoever. Especially when when we just saw a version of this in uh, the haunted pool movie. Was it? Oh no 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 the movie where that wasn't Insidious, um, where they go into the weird zone. oh uh the red door imaginary oh yes imaginary. yes yes and it was like she should not call him dad no he is not her dad they're not married she Isn't... can love and respect yeah. him and he can give her away at her lesbian wedding but <laughs> at ghost wedding yeah but but she's not his dad i mean he came into her life when she was 13 14 years old right i i gotta say just you know just personal way i grew up I had a stepmom between ages of five and fifteen, and that's pretty young for yeah. her to come into your life. And I never called her mom. Right. I probably should have because she was my de facto mom. Right. You know what I mean, you know, she raised me, but I, but but I, I, I never called her mom. But I don't I, care I, if people decide to do that. You can no, no, do no, no, what no, you want to do. But my but point it just is, seems I don't weird at fifteen, and I've known this guy for one year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. it is. Oh, yeah, it is yeah, my yeah. But it also, Andy was your teacher, like. Yeah. Mm, but it no. just didn't get earned in the movie yeah. either. Like the point was, he, he wasn't getting called dad, and then he all he didn't even necessarily want to be called dad. He was just trying to figure out what the dynamics of the relationship. Yeah, not only that, she wasn't privy to his whole conversation. Yeah, remember where she he thought she was on the other side of the door. I felt. Like it and came and out he of was, nowhere. And he was doing would, this whole thing yeah. of like how what I mean, yeah. what our relationship just because of this experience, be. she didn't even hear any of that. She wasn't yeah. even there. Yeah. And now he's dad. All of a sudden, I just thought it felt so forced. It would be saying as hunters. a joke. <laughs> She's like, "Thanks, Dad." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, that would have been fine. Yeah. That's but telling yeah, a I mean, joke. It was just a, a forced, unearned. Yeah. But do, we, do we know like where her dad is? Do they ever reference in the first so. one? Like, where I don't first, remember. I don't remember. Okay. I don't know. okay. But it's just, it's different if the movie had a script where there was a conversation between the two of them. And she's right. like, I'm not ever calling you dad. And then all right, of a sudden right, right. they share a moment and then it's like, okay, dad. Like, it, there's no payoff in this because all of a sudden she just does that where right. we have no history of her not calling him dad, thinking he's dad. like Being conflicted about whether or not she should see him that way. Like, nothing. Yeah, and they That's play true. it off like because the end of the first afterlife had such a good pull at your heartstrings moment. Right. They're like, we need this thing and he's like oh do you hear what she said and it's like oh, I, I but hate I, it. what I, I did don't. like is that he calls himself like he calls them the Spanglers yeah. like his name is like Guberman yeah. but he's like no we're the Spanglers and Carrie Coon's like oh are we we're the yeah. okay yeah. <laughs> but I you know I didn't think about it being a, a longer episode of the cartoon but that's exactly what this is yeah, yeah. It was and, just overstuffed uh, you, and I it, it, it just it was it would have been a lot more fun if he would have taken out all the extraneous. Yes. Things yeah. And, yeah. And Too many the, characters. All, and all the in the callbacks. Yeah. I didn't need any of that. And otherwise, you can, it was, it was you fun. can give me William Atherton as the mayor. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. That, that one, right. that yeah, one that works. Makes, right. Like but, that makes sense to a certain degree. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. it's yeah. Failing up. Also, he things. wasn't as dickish. Me. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I was watching. I, I still have cable. And I was watching Ghostbusters on AMC the other night. They cut out the. The dickless, the dickless line, thing, yeah. But they left in the uh, blow Ray job, getting blow the job. Blow job. <laughs> yeah. uh, and for one, AMC, there, uh, anything goes anymore. Yeah, you know I mean, you could say the f word on, on right. sure on there now. I was like, why? So that's why? Because why that's even... the edit that they were supplied they, and nobody yeah. questioned. Yeah, they did that but on the Walking edit, Dead. The edit left in the, the, yeah. the ghost dropping the f bombs. Yeah. It's like yeah. weird. But that is that is funny that they. <laughs> Yes, it's true. This man has no dick. Like yeah. that's oh, it's great. That's a, that's, it's a perfect line. And, yeah. and in the, the edit, is like it's true. This man is some sort of animal. It doesn't even make yes, any sense. Right. It's like it, the, it makes no sense. It's the Yippee major guy, a Mr. Falcon. Mother, mother yeah. trucker, yeah. or it's yeah. the uh, the the major league one. Where he's like, strike this guy out. You know what happens when you <laughs> find a stranger? This is what happens when you find a stranger in the Alps. Yes, yeah, that's a great. Is one. that really what that yes, is? That's from the, from, from uh, Big Lebowski. Lebowski. That's, that's what they say when yes. John Goodman is 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 taking a what a, a the, golf club to the car. Or yeah, whatever. yeah, yeah, yeah. 
This it's, is what happens when you find a stranger in the Alps. You know, there's a great. So I saw a photo from uh, one of the Lebowski Fest. You know, people do the costume mm-hmm. contest. Yeah. Someone did Stranger in the Alps. So they <laughs> were the because that's the name of uh, Sam. What's his name's character in there? The cowboy. Oh, okay. Sam Elliott. Yeah. So they had him in like lederhosen, but with with a, with a <laughs> oh, cardboard that's outfit. pretty good. Yeah, the stranger. That that's a good joke. I that's like that. Funny. Uh, yeah, this is. I, I think this is, an. In, it was a good time with the movies. Did. It, are there problems with it? Without yeah. question. If you just go in and you're wanting like a fun, uh, lighthearted Ghostbusters movie, then you're going to be fine. If you don't have high expectations, you're going to be fine. Yeah. It's just a shame because I think hard. the last one was so good. I think they really could have done something. I like this one better than the last one. Oh, oh wow. I like the last one better. Mm. Okay. This is my problem with the last one. They leaned really hard into the nostalgia and yeah. it was like this family drama and I was mm-hmm. like, is this what Ghostbusters is supposed to be about? Yeah. You know? I but don't think... Good, I, I, here's the thing. It was done very well. I'm not yeah. saying it wasn't I, done well. I, I don't, don't go to Ghostbusters and go, oh. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ghostbusters, the original, it's a slob versus snobs comedy. It's exactly you. what it, it is. is. And it's all it ever wanted it's to be. It's Revenge of the Nerds. It, it's Porky's. It's Meatballs. It's Animal House. It's, ju- it. it's Stripes. It's it's just that, but with ghosts. Uh-huh. And, and and I think so. I was I had joined a Ghostbusters Facebook group and you I poor, left it. You poor bastard! Because it oh was boy. such a <laughs> show. It's crazy how They're, all of these little MC, you know, Snyder they bros. Are so or, it's a personal affront to them yeah. that someone might not love this movie as much as them. And they've all decided this movie is great on Wednesday. Right. right, like like nobody had seen it yet, <laughs> and they're, they're, and they're so appalled that critics might not like it just like all the other ghostbusters it's, movies critics didn't like yeah right? it's yeah. just it, and i was just like that i gotta gotta go uh, like matt, matt f bosler loves going into those things yeah and just reading oh, com- like, and just reading oh, comments i mean, oh, I thought, I mean he goes in there to stir the no pot. no no like, no he just likes to like read the, he just likes to so read the insane. comments but i think what it really comes he down sends it to, to us every once in a while is that there are people i think the diehard ghostbusters fans are really love the lore and the characters and like that's fair and and but like the lore and the characters aren't that deep or complex i don't feel like it's a rich enough world to it's embra- not to embrace to that degree and so like in everybody else i think for the most part just wants to see a funny movie mm-hmm. yeah. and and so it's like i mean i've kind of made my peace with the fact that like really i liked the first movie i did i love the af- first movie after that it's just kind of like that. Okay. Yeah, I'm I exact think exact same way. And that first movie, I couldn't even put a number on how many same. times oh. I watched it well, because back, back yeah. in the eighties, yeah. you know, VHS weren't that yeah common. That we had we, we had maybe <laughs> six movies on VHS. Yeah, Ghostbusters was one of them. Yeah, my brother and I watched it all. I mean, the it was time. so expensive to buy a VHS. Yes, we, got, we bought these used bucks. from. Uh, it was like a place at Ch- mom and pop place. At yeah, we bought that used. And it's like if you bought one, it was gonna be. A, it's like when you first got CDs, you were only gonna buy greatest hits. Yes, yeah, or yeah, Dark yeah. Side of the Moon. Yeah, <laughs> because it's like you wanted something where you knew every song. Mm-hmm. And and movies were like that. If yep. you're gonna suck it up and buy a VHS for eighty or ninety bucks, yeah, like you're gonna get a movie that you know you want to watch repeatedly, over and over like and over. Ghostbusters or Airplane, yeah. yeah. And and uh, but yeah, like but same. And I probably saw this movie came out uh, the the summer before 84? I t- I turned fourteen. So like, I mean, I probably mm-hmm. saw this movie four or five times just in the theater. In the theater, yes. Like I yeah. would just. I've told that story over, over again. I, they must have re-released it because yeah. I saw this in theaters. Yeah, well, did. I got I saw a little bit of it in theaters. Yeah. Uh, oh. The it, you had a it, ghost that was uh, reaching the hole in your popcorn bucket. No. <laughs> your dad no. made you leave during the blowjob. Uh, nope. <laughs> I got through the blowjob. No. Wait. Well, it depends. But it wasn't in the movie. It was in the movie. Oh well, well I was with my aunt. That... I was with my aunt. Oh, so... <laughs> I thought this. Never mind. No. This was a different. No, story. no, no. Okay. I was a I was a kid. Yeah. Like a kid, kid, okay, a little kid. Gotcha. And the scene, you know, I, when I was growing up, didn't do, I didn't like things changing into other things. Lou Ferrigno into the Hulk. No, thank you. Wolf. The, American uh, yeah, Werewolf. American Werewolf. No, thank you. The Wolfman in Monster Squad. I hated some like it hot. It was terrible. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the Wolfman in Monster Squad. No way. That's Teen a, Wolf 2. Jason Bateman. Teen Wolf 1. I was like, nope. I know. I'm just what about fast. Teen Wolf 2? I never saw that. <laughs> okay. Uh, nobody did. Um, <laughs> but there, the scene in this, when the claws come out, of the dog my aunt tells us she's like you looked up at me and said i'm done oh, <laughs> and oh, wow. we got oh, up and wow. walked out and because i couldn't you know i was 
Okay. But That's like, funny. But in that 84, I would have been two. So I'm like, there's no way right. that they took me to the theater at two years old. and yeah. I was, Or that you would remember. That right. I was cognizant right. enough to be like, I'm done. But I don't want to watch this anymore. I had only seen Ghostbusters 2 once, and then I rewatched it, and I'm like, this is why. <laughs> I've seen that first one so many times, yeah. and yeah. I watched the second one, and I hardly remembered any of it, and I'm like, this is awful. Yeah. And another thing that was bad about that, I'm sure you remember this, there was a long gap between those two. Oh, sure. You know I mean, because what, 84? Four and 89? 89 or 90, was it? I don't think it was 90. Uh, I bet was it I was still 80. I think it was 80s. Uh, 89. Oh, yeah. was it? Yeah. Uh, okay, so still, it's not as long as five years to wait, five and then years. you're like, well, okay, I was thinking Because they couldn't get Bill Murray back on board. Bill uh, back. Yeah, you're, yeah, that's exactly right. And that shows in that and movie. they've never really been he able to get back He walks through since. that movie like he doesn't give a yeah, and that's the thing. He's bad. He's not good in the second one. He doesn't want to be there. No, that's no. The, and, and and it shows. And that's why I'm like, this is lame. Yeah, this is, yeah. It's, it well, is he didn't want to be there in the first one. That's true. Really, they, not even the first. No, one? no. The uh, the deal was he wanted to make Razor's Edge, and the wow. studio was like, "Well, that sounds like an awful <laughs> idea." And uh, they really wanted him in Ghostbusters. Yeah. And because Ghostbusters was originally written to be an Ackroyd Belushi movie, right? Mm. Right. And um. And then, obviously, Belushi would not sign the deal. I wonder why. Because <laughs> he was dead. That's right. And so uh, and so he retooled it, and then it was going to be... It was Chris Rock, right? No, no Eddie, no, Murphy. Eddie, Eddie Murphy. It was going to be Eddie Murphy, because yeah. he had just worked with him in Trading Places. Right. And then Eddie Murphy passed so he could do Beverly Hills Cop, so he could headline his own movie, because he had just Can't done... blame him. Like... It's a good choice. He had d- just done three movies where he split billing, right? Because mm-hmm. he had done Forty Eight Hours. Oh, yeah. sure. He had done Trading Man, Places. Have you watched that recently? I mean, it is. It's like holy a... verbiage. Yes. It? Yeah. yeah. Because it is Nick Nolte crazy. is crazy. Nick Nolte's character is, is terrible. Straight up racist. <laughs> yeah. But like, I will also say it still kind of works because. It's not trying to be cutesy. It's no. like this guy is a dick, yes, and they have to work together, so yeah, it yeah, still yeah. works. But but it's definitely jarring. Boy, oh yeah, boy, it is jarring. But um, trading uh, trading places. But trading places, and then uh, he made best defense with Dudley Moore. Oh, I don't think wow, I've he ever made seen so that. much I've money heard, on man, those I Beverly totally Hills. Forgot about that yeah, one. and then that wow. was that one tanked hard. Yeah, and, which is probably why I've never seen. And that. then he and then he did Beverly Hills Cop and bounced right back. Well, it's, that was yeah. It's probably crazy his biggest to hit at that t- at that point, wasn't it? Beverly Hills Cop. Yeah, more I more mean, so than Trading Places. Oh yeah, I mean yeah. it's probably his biggest hit to it's this did day. So much <laughs> money. Oh, yeah. It's crazy to think that Landis is coming back for that. Yeah, that is weird. Like, and he, I mean, Eddie Murphy was not. He's like, I'm never working they, with him again after Vampire in Brooklyn. Hey, would each not other. work with yeah. him. So I, I'm kind of look. I know I love John Landis, early John Landis. Oh, new John Landis, not very good. Murderer John Landis. <laughs> Murderer. Yeah. <laughs> Child killer John Landis. Uh, I am very interested to see what this movie looks like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. You know. Same. But, so uh, we'll but yeah, so I, um, but yeah, so I, I don't even remember where I started off. Oh, you're talking about Razor's Edge. He wanted to, Oh, the, yeah. So he wanted one for me, one for you. They, yeah. the tra- they traded yeah. off and that he agreed to do Ghostbusters in order to do I might watch Razor's, Razor's Edge. Edge. And right. Razor's Edge was okay. Yeah. Yeah. I I like the original version. The interesting footnote on Razor's Edge, there's a scene where he's giving a eulogy, Uh and he's like, this man was fat and dumb, and nobody liked him, and that is... Almost word for word, that whole scene is the eulogy he gave for John Belushi. That's right. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Yikes. But also, it doesn't really fit in that story. I don't know. It's kind of weird. Yeah. But um, I want to say for Ghostbusters 2... Like, I think did he had he just gotten divorced and he needed the money? It could be. Well, I mean, and, had he uh, had a hit? I know that life. Time? Yeah. I mean, was this? <laughs> yeah. um, what was the movie he did with Richard Dreyfuss? What about Bob? What about, what about Bob? Bob? Was That's, this around that time? No, this would have been later because that was in the nineties. What about Bob was in the nineties? What 90s? about yeah. Bob is in the nineties? Okay, yeah. so Groundhog Day, like that whole little well, run. That's in the nineties. Scrooge, well. Scrooge, nineties was eighties. Is no, no, I think that's nineties. Scrooge is early nineties. Ninety one, ninety three, maybe. Um. He has a very interesting career, yeah. Because he what would do kind of like those screwball. It's weird that he's just he's been canceled so much recently. But they're like, but for Ghostbusters, he's back, <laughs> and no one talks about <laughs> well, it. But it's I like, don't know he, when he showed up in. Well, it's not like my theater was that crowded last time, but I didn't hear a pop. Yeah, you know I just I mean? don't think people, like people are, are that like, into him. Well, he was up. also all over the trailer, so there's no surprise. To yeah, you. yeah, right, good right, point. Right. So let's see. Uh, um, so just looking at his resume from 80 on so he's in caddyshack and then he's in loose shoes he's in stripes 
Tootsie, I love Stripes. Ghostbusters, and then 84 is Ghostbusters, Nothing Lasts Forever, whatever that is. I have is. no idea what that is. And then, um, uh, and then The Razor's Edge, and then he pops up in for, what, one scene in The Little Shop of Horrors in 86. Yeah. In 88, he has an uncredited scene, and she's having a baby, which I don't remember. So I'm That's sorry, a good movie. Scrooge is 88. Okay. Ghostbusters 2 is 89. 90 is Quick Change, which you've never seen. I cannot recommend so it highly enough. It might be... It might be my favorite Bill Murray movie. Okay, I, really? I, I, I would love agree with Quick that. Wow. So, 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 so much. Um, and then 91 is What About Bob, Groundhog Day, Mad Dog and Glory, Ed Wood, Kingpin is 96. Kingpin is he the was turn. He great in Kingpin. Yeah. Kingpin is the turn, though, where he starts doing those weird. See, I think Rushmore is the turn. Oh, sure. It's because it's like Kingpin. That's fair. Larger Than Life, shot in St. Louis. Uh, Space Jam, The Man Who Knew Too Little bad i forgot he was in wild things yeah oh. yeah oh. and then rushmore once he got in the wes anderson stuff yeah that was yeah, he yeah, became yeah. the cult figure the chive and all that yep, i mean he yep, became yep. all so bill murray says he got tricked into starring in ghostbusters 2 i tricked. joined under false pretenses i thought that the only reason anyone would make another one was just to make money and i was probably the most reluctant someone outfoxed me anyway i don't know if ivan set it up but they got us all back together in a room and really we hadn't been together in a room since the movie came out and it was really really fun to be together we were really funny together those were some really wonderful really funny guys and girls sigourney weaver annie potts there's some really spectacular women and funny as hell they got us together they pitched us a story idea that was really great i thought holy cow we could make that work murray agreed to star in ghostbusters 2 based on the pitch but that pitch never materialized (laughs) into what would become the sequel screenplay as the comedian explained it ended up not being the story they wrote they got us in the sequel under false pretenses Harold had this great idea, but by the time we got to shooting, I showed up on set and went, what the hell is this? What is this thing? But we were already shooting it, so we had to figure it out. So they that, pitched him well, and wrote a different that's script. A, that's a legit complaint, and yeah. I'm sure that happens. Now but I'm curious I will also like, what, say, they, what the pitch was. Murray's got a history of like saying he Being got old. tricked into oh, movies. Oh, Garfield. Was like Garfield. That was the biggest where, beat line of BS. Yeah, yeah, where he's like thought it was a Coen Brothers movie. Yeah. Sure you did. <laughs> well, because it's directed by Joel Coen, yeah. but it's... Oh, but a, it's, different, it's a, a different one. Different it's, spelling. Spelling. it's spelled different. Yeah, it's like C- <laughs> and also, really, do you really think yeah, you're going to fall for that? Then explain I mean, Garfield too. Yeah, right. exactly. Also, <laughs> read the script. Does it look like a Coen Brothers right. movie? Does well, it see, sound like something they would do? This is why you have agents and not yeah. answering machines. Yes, thank yeah, you. Right? That's right. Also true. But... Uh, but anyway, there you go. so uh, I guess that's it for oh. this one. Let's uh, let's go around the table and everyone can say where to find them. This is Joe. You can follow me on the Twitter at Joey Butts, B-U-T-T-S-21, and on Letterboxd at the same. This is Kevin. Follow me on Twitter at Kevin R. Brackett. And this is Tom. You can follow me on Twitter at Roger Kubert or on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Tom O'Keefe. Matt, where can they find you and your wares? Uh, you can find me on Instagram, Matt Reedy 219 and uh, so don't forget you can find the show online at facebook.com slash real spoilers while you're there like the page join the group and of course don't forget our patreon at patreon.com slash real spoilers so that's it for this one uh thanks for tuning in and until next time i close my computer and I- oh my god <laughs> <laughs> my computer wake up until next time the wolf man has nards. the wolf man does have nards until next time larry stows away in mary's trunk Get ready for a spoiler Won't say it twice Cause we already warned you